So, in the last uh, lectures we have discussed the various uh, analog integrated circuits and uh, some mixed signal circuits such as A to D and D to A converters which uh, consists of a part of analog circuitry, a part of uh, digital circuitry. Today we will discuss uh, some of the digital circuits especially the CMOS circuits. So, the expansion of this CMOS is complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So, you might have studied MOSFET in your electronic devices course. is called as metal oxide semiconductor. Field effect transistor. Basically there are two types of the MOSFETs. One is N channel another is P channel. If you consider the structure of this N channel MOSFET, there will be P type substrate and uh, two n plus wells in between this is called as channel l is the channel length here there is one terminal called source and here there is terminal called drain and there will be silicon dioxide layer above which there will be a gate. That is why the name metal oxide semiconductor. You can see three layers, this is metal, this is oxide and this is semiconductor. That is why the name metal oxide semiconductor. N channel as the name implies the channel here is N type this is channel. And the substrate here is P type. If we take the P channel then the substrate is uh, 
n type and the channel is p type here if i take the cross dimension of this figure this is the gate this is one end place this is another end place this is source this is drain this is gate if take the cross section of this diagram we can see here the channel length channel width is this w here somewhere we will be having w this is channel length w l this is width w so this w by l ratio is called aspect ratio this plays an important role in the design of uh, cmos circuits so this is the basic structure of n channel mosfet similarly you can have p channel mosfet now the cmos circuits consists of both n channel as well as p channel devices we can uh, construct the circuits using only n channel as well as only p channel devices but there are some drawbacks of uh, this n channel devices and p channel devices to avoid these uh, drawbacks we will use the cmos circuits which consists of both uh, n channel as well as p channel the main drawback of this uh, n channel or p channel devices is more static power consumption later we can see that in cmos the power consumption is less when compared with the n channel devices or p channel device based circuits so i'll start the cmos circuits with the, the basic circuit inverter so the first circuit is cmos inverter as i have told this consists of both uh, p channel as well as n channel device so see the symbol of mosfet there are basically four terminals normally the substrate will be grounded so here will be having substrate also and then it will be grounded So if we neglect this, then there will be a gate, source, and drain. So this bubble represents this is P channel, and this is N channel. 
So, in P channel the current direction will be inside this arrow and here outside. So, this is gate of P channel, this is gate of N channel, this is source of P channel, this is source of P channel, this is drain of P channel, this is drain of N channel. Now, we will see the operation of this CMOS inverter. This is basically a inverter with the V in as input, V out as output. So, in order to understand the operation of any of the CMOS circuits, we have to remember three points. One is a N channel MOSFET. or in channel device is on if VGS is equal to positive. A P channel device is on if VGS is negative. Either device means either N channel or P channel is off if VGS is equal to 0. So, initially I am assuming this uh, P channel and N channel are ideal. Okay. So, what are the two possibilities of this V in? This can be 0 or logic 1. 0 means 0 volts, logic 1 means VDD. If V in is 0, that is logic 0, then what happens to the P channel device and what happens to N channel device? If we consider the N channel device, This V in is with respect to this ground and this is V G. So, what is V G S comma N? This N stands for N channel. V G S N means gate to this source. Here is nothing but these two points are connected. So, V in and G are same. This V in is also with respect to the same ground. So, these two are same, VGSN is equal to V in itself, that V in we have taken as 0. If VGS is 0 according to this, implies N channel MOSFET is off, ideally it will act as open circuit. open circuit. Then what happens to uh, P channel? So, what is VGS of P channel? If I know this VGS, I can find out whether this device is on or off. What is VG? VG of P channel. VG comma P means this gate voltage of P channel device. This is directly connected to V in, so this is equal to V in only. And what is uh, V source voltage of P channel? This S stands for source, this P stands for P channel. So, this is V source voltage of P channel which is nothing but VDD. Therefore, what is VGS P, P channel VGS voltage is nothing but VG comma P minus VS comma P. This is VGS P means VG minus VS. 
VGP is equal to V in, VSP is equal to VDD. V in minus VDD. What is V in? 0. 0 minus VDD is minus VDD and this is negative. So, VGS of V channel is negative. So, what happens? Device is on. Implies P channel MOSFET is on. Ideally, it will act as short circuits. So, what will be equivalent circuit of this one now? So, this VDD, this P channel will act as short circuit. This is short circuit. And here N channel will be open circuited. This is ground point. So, what will be output you are taking here? This is VDD. So, what happens? This entire VDD will be appeared across V out. So, this V out equal to VDD. implies V out is equal to VDD which is at logic 1. So, if input is logic 0, output is logic 1, this is the inverter, so, if logic 0 here this is logic 1. Second case is if V in is VDD, what happens? What is VGS of N channel? What is VGS of P channel? Based on this, we can find out whether the device is on or off. What is VGS? As you have seen here, VGS N is nothing but V in itself. And what is that V in? VDD, which is positive. So, if VGS of N channel is positive, this will be on implies n channel MOSFET is on n x as short circuit. Then what is VGSP is nothing but VGP minus VSP this is equal to VGP nothing but V in and VAC nothing but VDD. This is equal to VG is V in and uh, VSP is VDD. But what is V in? VDD. This is equal to VDD minus VDD. This is equal to 0. If VGS of either device is 0, this will be off implies P channel MOSFET is implies access open circuit in ideal case. So, what will be circuit now here we have VDD this is P channel it is like as open circuit then here we have N channel, this will act as short circuit, this is grounded and here you are taking the output V out because this was shorted V out is equal to 0. If V in is at logic 1, V out is at logic 0. This is the operation of the inverter. So, this will act as an inverter. If I give logic 0 here, we will get logic 1 here. If I give logic 1 here, output is logic 0. This is the ideal case, but uh, practically it will take some time to change from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. 
this is what is called the transient response. So, transient analysis of CMOS inverter. Now, here we have to take the practical case. Resource drain gate, this equivalent RC model. is we have source then there will be some capacitance here which is called as source capacitance. So, wherever two conductors are there, there will be some capacitance. In ideal case, uh, we will assume the capacitance are not present so, and you have obtained this output as logic 1 for input as logic 0 and vice versa. Now, in practical case you have to consider the capacitances also. Then this will act as a switch with some resistance. This is gate terminal this R n is the on resistance of n channel MOSFET. If we call this as n channel MOSFET. Then this is drain terminal. Here also there will be some capacitance which is called C d drain capacitance. Now, it depends upon the VGS. So, in case of ideal case, uh, what we assumed is if VGS is uh, positive, N channel MOSFET will be on and it will, it will act as short circuit. There is no resistance at all. And if VGS is 0, then uh, it will act as open circuit. Whereas, in practical case, if VGS is greater than V threshold voltage, this is called threshold voltage. Of course, everything is for n that is why I am not writing comma n and all. Then MOSFET is on. So, whenever this is on, then this switch is closed. and this will provide on resistance of R n. So, what will be equivalent circuit now? Simply source then R n of course, this will add short circuit and drain here source capacitance here drain capacitance and this is R n. If V g s is greater than V t, if V g s is less than V t, MOSFET is off. and switch will be opened. And simply there is a open circuit between 
course and train. Because there is an open circuit, there will be no resistance. No capacitor, I think actually this will be acts as open circuit, this is same as the ideal case. So, this is the equivalent circuit in case we VGS is less than Vt, simply open circuit. If VGS is greater than Vt, this is the equivalent circuit of N mass device. Similarly, you can have P mass device, here that will be having Rp. Rp is normally greater than Rn. Why? The mobility of electrons is greater than the mobility of holes. It is why the resistance to holes is more than the resistance to electrons. Now, in the transient analysis, I will consider the same CMOS circuit. I will consider the same CMOS inverter circuit. If I apply low to high transition here, output changes from high to low. So, this delay time is called as T high to low, also can be called as fall time. Of course, fall time is later I am going to define from 90 percent of the high value to the 10 percent of the high value change is called as fall time. We are going to derive the expression for the fall time of uh, this CMOS inverter. Later I will consider the rise time. So, I am not showing here the capacitance at all, but all the capacitance will be present, source capacitance, drain capacitances. Here I will take now this as a function of time. So, how does this output will changes? If I connect here some capacitance, see out, which consists of the drain capacitance of these P channel as well as drain capacitance of N channel. So, C out is drain capacitance of the P channel plus drain capacitance of N channel and some load capacitance also. So, across this C out we are taking output voltage. Initially what will be the output voltage high? then it will comes to low. Okay. Initially VDD, but it will not come abruptly in case of ideal, it will this time taken to change from high to low is 0, but practically because of this capacitances and all, there will be exponential decay. Finally, it will come to low. So, you see nothing but V out as a function of time. What is the initial value of V out at 0 initially high? It is VDD. If I assume that this is the direction of the current. So, what will be equivalent circuit? If I apply from low to high, if input is high, then what happens to the P channel? What happens to N channel? If Vn is high, It 
this V D D. I have seen the previous case. If V in is high, then P channel will be off and channel is on. So, what will be the equivalent circuit? This V D D and P channel will be open circuited. So, there will be no part of this pull up network, this is called pull up network. Only pull down network will be there. So, there will be a short circuit here, this is the output and this will have a short circuit P channel for input is high and here we are taking the capacitor C out. and this is the current direction. Now, the capacitor will discharge us to ground. Initially, what will be voltage across this one? VDD because this was in high, now it will comes to low. So, from this high to low, transition takes place through this short circuit and then to the ground. So, what is the expression for the current? Because the current direction is from ground to this V out, this is V out point, this is equal to minus C out times D V out by D T is the expression for the current through the capacitor. But if I consider this practical case, there will be on resistance. So, here there will be some on resistance. there is a short circuit and this is R N on resistance because this is N device is on. So, what is the expression for this current? This is the voltage V out, this is resistance V is equal to R i, this is also equal to V out divided by R N. This is the expression for I. In terms of C, this is the expression. In terms of V and R, this is the expression. So, if I solve this first order linear differential equation, this is a differential equation. With the initial condition that V out of 0 is equal to V E D, you will get V out as V D D into E to the power of minus T by tau n, where tau n is R n into C out, this is called time constant of n channel device. Now, the fall time is defined as normally the 90 percent of this V D D which is 0.9 if I call this one as T x and if I call this voltage as V 1. V 1 is 0.9 times V D D means 90 percent of V D D and if I call this as V 2, V 2 is 10 percent of V D D. 0.1 V E D. This is T by this time is defined as normally fall time. So, in order to derive the expression for this one, e to the power of minus T by tau n is equal to V out by V D D or minus T by tau n is equal to logarithm of V out of time by V d d or minus T is equal to tau n times logarithm of V out of T by V d d or if we take T then you have to reverse this. 
thousand times logarithm of v d t by v out of t. Then we are calling t x as the time at which v out is equal to this v out is equal to v one, which is point nine times v d t. If we substitute that at t is equal to t x v out of t is equal to 0.9 v d d implies t x is equal to tau n logarithm of v d d divided by 0.9 v d d v d d v d d get cancelled we will get tau n logarithm of 1 by 0 0.9 see expression 1 at t is equal to t y at t is equal to t y this is 0 0.1 v d d v out of t is equal to 0 0.1 v d d therefore t y is equal to tau n times logarithm of v d d divided by 0 0.1 v d d it is equal to tau n times logarithm of 1 by 0 0.1 and what is fall time T f if I call as fall time the difference of these two T y minus T x that is equal to tau n into logarithm of 1 by 0 0.1 minus tau n of logarithm of 1 by 0.9. So, tau n if you take as common log a minus log b is equal to log a by b. So, this is equal to logarithm of a by b means this is 0.9 by 0.1 which is 9. This value is 2.2 times tau n. See normally called as high to low transition. T high to low, where tau n is time constant, which is equal to R n into C out. This is expression for the fall time. So in the next lecture, we will discuss about the rise time, and we'll have some discussion. Thank you.